All right, I think I think we're good now. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, welcome to episode fifteen of Once Upon a Game, a uh, story game variety show where uh, I usually facilitate uh, a random game that's typically GMless and prepless, and just play on the fly with some friends for a few hours, and then when we're done, we we say goodbye, and then that's it. Uh, so in like a sort of like Buddhist sand mandala, uh, we create something fantastic and then we wipe it away. Uh, so um, the game we're playing for episode 15 is a game called Downfall that was recently uh, published after a very successful Kickstarter by an amazing designer named Carolyn Hobbs, um, who had the pleasure of meeting at Geek Girl Con uh, a couple months ago. And she's just super awesome, so I'm very happy to play this game. Um, and I'm also very happy to play with these two people I brought with me. Uh, I just found them on the street, and just they needed a home, and so uh, I got them in story games here. So, uh, uh, Adam, starting with you, man. What's up? Hello. Good. Uh, things are going good. How's things going for you? Very good, very good. Awesome. Yeah, so uh, I'm Adam. I'm also, my Twitch and everything else name is Suckstradamus. Stream over there. Um, do I, I do a lot of table stuff tabletop stuff now with mostly on other people's streams i'm getting my own stuff getting and going and but yeah it's been fun i'm definitely excited to be here i was here with microsculpt a few weeks ago and it was a blast so i'm looking forward to this awesome thank you mm-hmm. and ryan i really just am some random guy he took off the street uh, i'm just here <laughs> to play some old thing games yeah thank you for having me Yes. Yeah. So, uh, Ryan, have you are you familiar with story games in general as opposed to like regular role playing games? I am slightly familiar. Theoretically say. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> I understand the idea. I sure. have control of everything, um, mm-hmm. and I, I I I think I get it. Yeah. No. So I I totally believe you because. We only need one thing for story games, and that's people to play, because we're the most important element of these games. Um, Indeed we do. So the big thing about this game and the space I was talking about a little bit earlier is that this is going to be a one-shot, and so I really want you guys to just bring it, basically, Mm -hmm. for this game. Uh, I know that might be might be sounding like it's kind of a lot of pressure, but really it's like <laughs> it's more um, just feel free to to add elements that you want. Um, don't be afraid to, uh, because along with with that freedom, we have a sort of like control mechanism, what's called the X card, where if you're uncomfortable and someone went a little too overzealous with something that you're not comfortable with, because you know we don't really know each other that well, um, you know it's okay. Uh, just just let me know either privately or or, or in chat or or publicly. Just be like, hey, hold on, I'm actually not really feeling something, um, and and say it, and and we'll we'll work that out. Um, I'm very much your safety and and fun is my priority. So like, are we all on board with that? Before, before we go any further, awesome. Solid. Yes. Cool. Um, so, uh, let's let's talk about downfall. Um, so Downfall is a game about a, a society uh, called a haven uh, that will ultimately unravel. Uh, it, it contains a sort of like f- tragic flaw, and uh, it's a game about a hero who will uh, unfortunately be unable to stop this unraveling. Uh, so it's a story about a hero desperately uh, trying to uh, basically save the world. Um, and and fail. 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 So mm-hmm. um, if you're looking for a happy story, this is not the game for you. Yeah, it will be, <laughs> it, but it will be an epic story for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, It'll so yeah, just ultimately. <laughs> so uh, bear with me for a moment because uh, what we're, we're gonna do is we're gonna go into our mind's eye here for a second, and we're gonna imagine that we're looking at a movie trailer, and there's like crackling flame or something like that, and it's like a black screen. We just hear like that's the sound of embers, you know, crackling and. And we hear like the Lord of the Rings female narrator voice go, <laughs> Our home is breaking, and we have no one to blame but ourselves. We built a flawed society, and soon it will destroy itself. Though most of us can't perceive the coming doom, a hero arises to fight against the impending, impending collapse. Downfall is the story of how we try to save our society and ourselves and fail. Boom. Okay, so that's that's like the flavor text of the game, right? Um, so uh, let me move over to roll twenty. 
do do. Um, and so downfall. Um, so this is going to be a completely collaborative game. So while I'm the facilitator and I read the rules, I don't necessarily have any more creative input than anybody else. Um, we're all equal members here at the table. Um, and so the object of this game is to find out how society collapses and make its downfall tragic, beautiful, and meaningful. Um, so we're going to create the rich world and then set it on fire and watch it uh, <laughs> just burn. Um, figuratively or maybe literally. So um, are we ready to begin? Absolutely. Yep. Awesome. So um, the first thing we do is sort of like the setup phase, like the creation phase of the game, where we're going to be establishing some facts about our haven. Um, so um, all havens do, before we come up with like a time zone or a period or anything like that, is we want to pick out a flaw. Now, um, on page 11 of the book, uh, there's a list of example flaws. And mm -hmm. uh, this is like the root of, this is the cause of our unraveling of the flaw. So. Um, with me, I think mm -hmm. we should figure out um, together what kind of flaw we're interested in exploring today. So this this would be the why the city falls, like the core, yeah. like all exactly. the issues exactly. pointing yeah. in this direction. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but all, like all the bad stuff in our haven ultimately comes down to this one like idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Examples mm -hmm. uh, include ambition, uh, classicism, uh, cowardice, greed, uh, materialism, nationalism. Uh, pride, racism, uh, sexism, vanity, um, you know, just basic Western culture stuff. <laughs> I I kind of like vanity. Vanity? Yeah, I think that could be interesting. Cool. But yeah, I'm not, yeah, we can obviously pick um, something else too. But I am, it sound, just kind of sounds interesting. I am all about that pride. Fucking love it. Pride could be cool too. Pride, yeah, I think pride might be pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, I know the last one I played was nationalism. Mm -hmm. um, so I would be interested in doing something that's not nationalism. <laughs> so that's that's my uh, one thing. <laughs> so um, I yeah. mean, pride and vanity are pretty close. So like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we want to like? I don't know exactly how. How would you define? So how about this, Adam? Uh, define for me what you mean by vanity, and like, what do you think of vanity uh, versus pride? And like, what is what does one mean to you? I guess that the other one doesn't represent. I guess my view of vanity is kind of similar to pride, just kind of because. Well, I guess vanity is like a a narrower scope of pride in that you're more concerned about like your physical and non-physical appearance for other people like looking good yeah. to everyone in a like okay uh, yeah social in, yeah your your social, social like, mask social that and, you wear yeah yeah but yeah, right? yeah okay uh ryan uh what about you the difference between pride and vanity because I'm, I'm trying to think of a way to like synthesize something like that right for for something mm -hmm. that we all kind of want i think that the the thing with pride is that it's it's the, the the difference for me between pride and vanity is the action that um, that you will end up doing. So with pride, it's all about like it doesn't matter if you look better. It's it's just um, elevating one like your feeling of like self worth to be like higher and higher mm -hmm. than than yeah. everyone else's. And it's or or maybe not elevating your own, but like making everyone else's lower. Yeah. Well, well, vanity, vanity is all vanity, about, yeah, yeah. It's all about making yourself just appear to be better than everyone else, rather than actually having yeah. to necessarily be better yeah. or worse. Yeah, like vanity is wanting to be better than everyone else, and pride is knowing that you're better than. Yeah, everyone else. is thinking that you are. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, um, which one do we want to pick? I'm cool with pride, actually. If we want to go down yeah. that route, yeah. uh, that's why I like talking about that because that was a really mm -hmm. good idea, guys. Thanks. So we're gonna do uh, our flaw as pride. Fantastic. Cool. So, uh, that's the game. Thanks for playing. <laughs> All right, no. Uh, <laughs> no, okay. So, the next part is we get to describe the haven. And um, so, uh, for the part with the haven is the way we do this is that we're each going to create, uh, choose an element. And now these elements are going to be the seeds for our tra uh, traditions that we're going to come up with for the next and last step of the setup phase. Uh, well, besides our character creation stuff. But, um, so these are going to be... Um, I guess the best way of putting elements is that they're just like basically just inspiration creativity seeds that like we're going to come up with traditions that sort of like twist these elements and look at these elements in different ways. So these are elements that are important to our society and our culture. Um, so uh, example elements that are given from the book for, for our dear viewers are um, like air, uh, fire, uh, noise, uh, gravity, hills, 
ink, silence, sky, smog, steam, music, void. Um, basically, just just kind of actual elements. Empire. Oh, <laughs> How do we yeah. pick a color? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, it's it's more of just like uh, this is kind of like a palette in a way, but it's mm -hmm. it's less um, it's less specific. It's like a it's a yeah. like a palette of our palette. Okay, if that so makes sense. Yeah, like the example, like the example in the book, like it doesn't even have to literally be that thing. Like I think in the, like the example, like someone chose ink and they they made that to be like the main river that ran through their haven was like super black and dark like ink. Yeah. Because of like pollution or something, effort to like pollution or something like that. But yeah, mm -hmm. like it just man it manifests itself in some way. It can be metaphorically, literally. Exactly. Exactly. These are sort of like just inspiration in whichever mm -hmm. way you you want. Hey, Tice, how's it going? So, um, so we each choose one, and yes. then we share. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, if any, if any of these are calling out to you immediately, feel free to share. Um, I'm thinking mountain. For me personally. Oh, dude, it says secretly, dude. You're not playing by the uh, rules. Well, yeah. Well, normally you write <laughs> on an index card and then you reveal yeah. it, which is yeah. like kind of impossible in the way we're doing <laughs> so um i'm just gonna say mountains I, I otherwise i guess in the future what i could do is like have a jeopardy just, countdown yeah, just have, and then you, and then just go boom you can see the, uh, people can see the roll 20 chat so we could have just typed it in there oh that's true um i think either empire dude's like i just want to mm -hmm. see what sort of weird thing we could come up with yeah dude like, no like, like absolutely weird. yeah no Definitely challenge us weird. i'm look if, if you're uh, if you want to do that man i'm all about it like i'm all like empire, about like, pushing okay, empire empire sounds super cool but also seems kind of like cliche dude there's nothing wrong with cliche mm -hmm. uh that's i think that's a lot of, an issue actually a lot of people have with story games is that people want to be super creative and they're afraid of using tropes and cliches it's like it, dude, when well, you, yeah, that's that's one of the cool things like you take your cliche and yeah. it looks like it, and then you just twist it, and yeah, exactly, and, and then all of a sudden it's not a cliche, or like mm -hmm. you inverted it somehow or something, and just Let's like go insane. Empire. Let's go. yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. I'm absolutely about Mountain Empire. Oh my God, this is yeah, okay, okay. I'm hmm. um, what are you feeling? I'm thinking either oh. chains or dream. Both sound Chains awesome. or Dream. I, I, apparently, there's a um, fire truck nearby. Sorry. Super cool. Um, I'm going to go with Dream. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Holy shit. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. All right. <laughs> um, I'm totally... I'm all about this right now. So, okay. So, using these three elements now, uh, this is step two. Um, using these three elements, we're going to start creating sort of the world and, and our haven that, that exists in it. So, um... How do we how do we think um, these elements all tie into the world that we want to do now? Um, so what we're kind of looking at at this stage is to kind of come up with like a two or three sentence description of our haven. Yeah. So basically, we're going to come up with more of our era, uh, more of our sort of like, you know, like setting and location. Mm -hmm. Um. um. Mountain Empire and Dreaming. Yeah. Um, I'm just going to say the first thing that comes to my mind is dwarves. Yeah. <laughs> that also came right to my mind, too. Just Mountain, Mountain Empire. Empire. <laughs> um, we could also do giants, I think would be cool. Mm -hmm. um, or like minotaurs or like something like oh, that. Yeah. Like something like shamanistic. Mm, we or, could. That, that's definitely an idea. Or um, I was thinking, I don't know. When I when I when I read the three words, I pictured like some sort of like s like castle or city that like sits on top of the 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 mountain. And oh sure. The, and the, the dream is like moving yourself from, and it's and the mountains empire thing like scales down, and then the dream is to like go to the top. Oh, to so live near it, the castle. So it's like a pyramid kind of like living oh, situation. Okay, yeah. okay. All right. So it's like um, uh, what's what's the name of the place in Lord of the Rings? Um, the white, 
the white one, Minas Tirith. So it's like 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 the cat, the guy, the king or whatever lives at the top, mm-hmm. and everyone kind of just kind of circles around. Oh yeah. Um. So yeah, like no, totally like a pyramid type structure where um the most important people live near the top. Mm-hmm. Cool. So um, what are yeah, we thinking like in terms that. of like setting an era? Like fantasy? Are we doing like sci-fi? So this is like another different like planet or like an asteroid? Um. Uh, so I alternate think I Earth. Want, I want dreams to like actually play like. Well, it's it's one of our elements of the Haven, so I wanted to play like a integral role, and I, I I think the question is how do we want the dreams to like interact with our setting? Do you want it to be like an actual yeah. people, like a dream Absolutely. about the place, yeah. or do they like have aspirations? Is that their dream, or is it like do people like mm-hmm. actually like is it literal? Yeah. Manip- yeah, do we like yeah. literally manipulate tr- people's dreams? Yeah, I, I I do like that that like it's not is literal it, in that the dream is to rise to the top but also if we want to inter- integrate in some other way that, that sounds cool too um we almost certainly will probably yeah yeah <laughs> um because i think we're all all jamming on that a little bit in our minds um so, so how about, let's start with where our haven so our, our haven's going to take place on a mountain right yeah yes okay definitely on a mountain um and is our haven a, is it going to be like this mega city that that spirals up the mountain? That I think that sounds super awesome. Okay, cool. Mm-hmm. Um, is it inside the mountain or like on slash like the slopes? The it could be both. Yeah. I think it could be both. Okay. Oh my god! So it's almost like a I'm I'm picturing almost like an arcology or like or something like a uh, what do you call it? Um, like like Tower of Babel. Yeah, mm-hmm. like um, like that kind of idea. Um, like you can, like you can, like you can live your entire life in this thing and never have to leave it. Yeah, like everything you could ever need is in is somewhere around this place. Yeah, so I'm thinking, what do um, what um, so what sort of like era do we want? Do we want like mm-hmm. do we want fantasy? Do I think we, we want... want fantasy? I, okay. I I'm feeling fantasy. That seems what we're like, like, like kind of le- leaning towards. Okay. And um, then human, or all right, I I think human would just be easier. I'm, or is it? I, I just prefer I prefer humans. I don't know. I guess like standard fantasy races, or just strictly humans, or like you know. I did like when how like we we started to venture towards like the not so standard ones like giants and minotaurs. So, I'm not. I don't think like it's a entire society of them, but like having other. Like not so standard things that be involved. Like maybe, I guess, cle- like, yeah, the the trope I guess would be that they that they all live towards the bottom, but um, Ooh. I guess if we could, I'm thinking of ways to like integrate that, like I think we could just mix it all together. We could have we could just have everybody. Yeah. Okay. No, I just want to make sure we're okay with other other stuff like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. That's good. Um. So the next thing is that we're going to do is we're going to come up with our traditions then, right? Um, I think because I think we're okay with sort of our setting now. Yeah. Right? Like we got a pretty good picture of what things look like and, and kind of what's here. I'm um, going to – What's the world? One more oh, thing. Yeah. What's up? Random thing that just hit me. Dr- uh, dream. I'm almost – I guess uh, something random is, is some, something kind of like the movie uh, The Island. How like oh, there's a there's a thing that like people are told exists and is like if you if you if you get chosen to go there that means you're like the top of the top awesome person in this place but it doesn't actually exist mm. like the top of the mountain like everyone talks about how the top like the top of the peak or whatever is like if you Shangri La like yeah, yeah you're set. like. Like you never, like you're never hungry, you're never thirsty. You don't have to, you don't have to work. You just get to like write stories or paint or do whatever you want to do all day. Yeah. And like, uh, it's almost used as a, as a way to like the bottom people, people at the bottom mountain to like, well, someday you could come to the peak. Yeah, if you work hard. Yes, yeah, you get to you get higher up by working hard. Yeah. Yeah. Sure, like that myth, totally. Mm-hmm. So, um. So this won't be the end of our discussion of what the setting looks like, but oh yeah, I definitely like that idea of, of like the dream being like the American yeah. dream or whatever, right? <laughs> like that sort of like Puritan work ethic. And it's all a sham. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's move to traditions. So the our haven, 
Um, our haven is built uh, with a flaw at its center, and their flaw reveals itself through traditions. And now traditions are customs, beliefs, and practices that show how the flaw manifests itself uh, in our society. Um, these are things that our culture absolutely does and absolutely believes. Um, they mm -hmm. describe how we interact within the Haven and how we interact with groups outside of the Haven. Um, so now we're together. We're going to create six of these. Um, so what we're going to do is um, first, first we're going to choose a category of our tradition, and um, the traditions start with um, like there's a list here uh, in yeah. the book, like architecture, birth, death, economics, fashion, hospitality, love. Uh, relationships, religion, and uh, from then we're going to start adding like our twists and what we think. Okay? Yeah. Um, so, um, anybody have one uh, right off the bat that they want to snag? Um, I think I'll take education for 100 points. <laughs> sure. I like naming. Uh, I'm gonna take. Uh, I'm gonna take love. Oh. What's love got to do? What is love? Baby, no, don't, don't don't hurt me. Don't hurt me. <laughs> no more. So, um, great. So now what we're gonna do is we're each gonna create a tradition, and we're gonna take turns. Um, so what we're gonna do is. Uh, think about our, our category that we chose, and then we're going to describe uh, how the tradition um, re relates to the flaw based on that that sort of aspect. Mm -hmm. um, so basically, ask yourself, like, how does pride uh, seep yeah. into education or naming or love? Um, if you can't think of a reason why it embodies it, um, then you should select a different tradition. Um, and then after, you, after someone's described the tradition, um, the other person gets to actually um, describe a sort of like symbol that happens. So we're, what we can do is um, we'll start by just going to the right as an on screen. So um, the thing that I come up with, uh, Adam, you get to uh, come up with a symbol. Adam gets to come mm -hmm. up with a symbol for Ryan and Ryan gets to, gets to come up with a symbol for me. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, from, from then on, then we'll have our first of our three traditions. So, um, or who wants to start uh, describing their tradition? I have okay. an idea. Oh, if, go ahead, if, go ahead. Um, go for it. Okay. So I'm thinking with names, rather than like you're born and you get a name and that's your name and then kind of that's pretty that's much it, your name yeah. throughout life unless something happens. I'm thinking you're never given a name. You have to get a name somehow, either by earning it or buying it, or somehow like you get a name through your actions. And so, but like, it's not like ever, you pretty much everybody has their own name. Like, I think like a lot of people have the same name because like, well, Just this so famous guy had this irrelevant. name. There was the hero. Uh, yeah. The so, hero Roger, who did something, and so now like Roger is like, oh, well, my name's Roger. Oh, we do. We don't even have to name. We don't even have to name. His name is just the hero. Yeah. yeah. If he, if people have to like either buy names or are given names, like so. So you get a name. You're never given one. Yeah. Either like you, you like you you get a name because of something you did or like you bought the right to a name. Exactly. Like names, right. Like yeah. Cer like certain names are like oh well like only certain people can afford this name. Yeah, and like if you call yourself by a name, it's like some people might be like, yo, yeah, yeah, let me see some proof. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you, you have to have like a sign show me your birth certificate. I own the right to this name. <laughs> yeah, like that's a that's an issue. Okay, cool, cool. Um, all right, uh, education or love. Um, so I was gonna say that I think for education, I think that um, the pride that's that people have, and then it's. Like, it's not, like, outright taught, but it's, like, seeped into the curriculum is that, like, there's different, like, definitely different, like, schools that are, like, better and worse than other ones. And, like, all the people from, like, um, 
that have like more prior to like these schools versus other schools and then in those schools they're, they're also taught like that the other schools are like worse or that the other schools better depending on where they are like it's just very it has a profound um what's the word i'm looking for like it's it's clearly like expressed and taught by the culture that we have here the schools have a culture of supremacy yes that's or like perfect. rivalry yeah yeah so yeah so, so so it's like colleges or like high schools in america but like taken to the extreme yes of like yeah Um, so for me, I was thinking that, um, I was thinking it's actually something in terms of like marriage and I, but I think that might end up going with naming. And so I I might want to change it. My original idea was that, um, people actually ended up, um, competing for who gets, which couple gets the last name uh, of of a marriage. But I feel like that goes, ties too much into naming. So I think I want to do something different. Um, I think what it will be is that um, uh, people uh, people profess their love, like when they ever want to like um, have an engagement or something like that. Um, they try to go as high up on the mountain as possible to propose, mm-hmm. as like a symbol of how much they love them, right? Mm-hmm. So whether it's sneaking up there or paying the privilege or whatever, I don't know. But mm-hmm. people want to go up as high as possible to proclaim their love for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so it's not the size of the ring. It's well, he took me. Yeah, exactly. Like, right up the up this tunnel, and we 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 got to, we got to like three thousand three thousand feet or whatever. Like, <laughs> yep. Um, awesome. What do you propose? I guess is what I should say. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay, so um, we're gonna write it. So we, since we wrote that down. Um, any questions or anything, or are we ready to move to the symbols? I think we can go to the symbols. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, um, once again, uh, Ryan, you have to make a symbol for my love. Um, I make a symbol for the names, and Adam, you make a symbol for the education schools. Yep. Okay. Um, I think an easy symbol for love is just a ring. Sure. The ring. I, I think a symbol for education is when you graduate from when you like uh yeah like when you pass all your all your tests and whatever and you graduate from it you get branded with like the symbol of your school. Ooh, like a like a tattoo. Yeah. Like this, like the school's like logo. Yeah, like like each school has like like, a, like, like, like yeah. a symbol or something and yeah so, the um, sigil. Yeah, like as, as part of the graduation ceremony, you step up, shake the headmaster's hand, and then like, write like and like placement is a big thing too. Of like, well, our our school places ours on the arm. Well, their school places theirs on like the back of the neck. Gosh, like that. you put us on Dude, our foreheads. Do yeah. this. You know, Adam. Sometimes I don't like playing with you because you keep stealing my ideas. I was gonna do that for naming. Is that you have like a like a proof of a name of like a tattoo? And now you just stole that, so now I have to come up with something else. So thank you. Um, just, you know, we're 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 we're, we're mind melding everybody here. I know. Uh, <laughs> well, shoot. Okay. Um. Um. I mean, I could go with like a certificate, or you have to like have a proof of that. Um. Yeah, I like the I like the idea. You have to wear your name, but mm-hmm. I, I'm not sure how I want to express that. Does anybody have any cool idea of like how you wear your name? Maybe it's um like in Scarlet Letter. Yeah, like like oh, a like, like a like band. A yeah, like a, like it's part of your fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm cool with that. Yeah. That does, good. does anybody have like a cool idea though for like how it gets worn? Is it like is it a band? Is it like um uh what do you call it? Is it the, uh, um, like a like a brooch? I think um, it's like, a, like a I hand? think it's uh what I imagine when I picture it like that. I think it's just like the little like 
wrist bracelet with like a little piece of metal that has uh the name and there's sure. only like so many bracelets like you get you only oh, get you, you, oh, yeah. your, you have to get your bracelet from like the name registry yeah, yeah. exactly so there's so always it, some amount of bracelets for some so it's bracelets. like a name it's the bracelet's like a dog tag basically yeah. Yes. okay yeah so like a name and you, bracelet. you only get the right to get one of those if you earn it yeah, totally. So that also, that also opens up counterfeit name bracelets. Oh, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll probably get into that. Mm-hmm. So the next thing we do <laughs> is that now that we got this stuff, we get to repeat this again. Sweet. <laughs> so uh, once again, we jump back up to the mm-hmm. categories of traditions, and we each are going to come up with one again. So... um. Economics. Nice. Hmm. Uh, religion. Yeah, economics. Um, art. Nice. Okay, so what are the traditions that you guys have in mind? Economics. Uh, let's, let's start with economics. Mm-hmm. The more money you have, the higher in the mountain you live. That sounds perfectly reasonable. More money, more altitude. Because you get to look. Because, like, think about it. The higher you, are, the higher you are on the mountain, mm-hmm. you get to look down on everyone else. It's yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, I know. That's that's why pride in mountain works. <laughs> like, like we don't we don't even have to try. <laughs> like, uh-huh. That was that was a gimme. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Um, awesome. Okay. So, uh, for art, um, yeah. I'm thinking like sculptures and um, like crafts are bigger than like paintings, or I guess paintings too. But it's it, the art isn't based on how good it is or what it represents, it's based on where you got the materials to make your art. So, like, if you got a block of like marble from way up. Then yeah. that's what like even if it's like like a really really terrible sculpture that's worth way way more than if you like just like the the thing from like down near the base of the mountain or whatever like and if like like you could have like Michelangelo craft craftsmanship level but it's made out it's like but yeah that's made out of like uh, cobblestone like what yeah, okay. what is this what are you even doing with your life yeah. like well um once again can, yeah kind of kind of similar thing uh mm-hmm. is that um they revere the mountain itself um so oh, yeah. i think the idea as a religion is that the um the mountain is sort of like a mother earth kind of thing and mm-hmm. that it like sacrificed itself or like part of the earth like like basically the earth gave us ourselves the mountain to live in and so we kind of revere um th- that the fact that they like we have the mountain as our as our home mm-hmm. um i mean we kind of betray it with with how we vie for power on top of it and how that's probably petty in the <laughs> eyes of the mountain uh-huh. but actually i like that idea i like the idea yeah. that um the religion doesn't want you to necessarily do that it wants you to it's more of like a christian idea that like the mountain sacrificed itself for us to live in it oh yeah yeah um, but like yeah but, but it's been twisted over time yeah so like, oh uh, like a, to a gospel of wealth kind of thing yeah 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 totally um like so it, I, it, it gave us such height to yeah. show like how good we are yeah uh so i'll say the mountain is sacred is what i would say if it wanted us to be in the same level it would have been a plane <laughs> yeah no absolutely oh my god dude yeah you okay you're too good at this game man i i can't i can't have you on here anymore <laughs> you're too good i'm, I'm, I'm power game I'm, i know how to power game story games i guess yeah yeah you're you got it great <laughs> so um story games let's um <laughs> Let's go the other way this time, though, for what our symbols go. Is that okay? It's not necessarily in the rules, but... Um, so this time, uh, Ryan, you get to come up with something on Adam's. And Adam gets to come up with something on mine. And I get to come up on something for yours, Ryan. How's that sound? Just as a way to mix it up. I think for... Art, I think the easiest way to represent it would just be a sculpture, a statue, something representative art maybe a paintbrush i think a paintbrush is a lot more easier to recognize more symbolic Mm -hmm. yeah and it can be paint too like oh you got these uh like i think it's yeah i think it's the colors i think yeah Yeah. the colors are more representative in paints Mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense yeah 
yeah, whether it's like yeah, whether like the the kind of paint you used or yeah, that's cool. Um, religion. Um, huh. And now I'm, I'm thinking of stuff, but it's too similar to other stuff we've come up with. Because I was thinking of like where you go to worship is important, but it's too. But I feel like that's too similar to the education. Yeah. What I was gonna do was um. Well, mine was economics was view. Um, you you are rated based on your house's um, perspective and view over like the rest of the mountain and, and the lands around it. Hence, the higher the you're up. Um, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. So. Um, so view from your house is Ooh, the sim is the symbol um, that I want. Like your backdrop, basically. So what's up? So I guess I'm going to invent. In this, I'm going to invent a race. Sure. Um, so there's a race of people that are, like, basically like stone golems. And those are, like, the fathers and bishops of the religion. Uh, what would you call them? The stone fathers? Yeah, the stone fathers is cool. I mean, yeah, you said that, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Awesome. So. Uh, now the last thing we do is we come up with a name for a haven. Um, I mean, dwarves call their cities mountain homes. So what do we want to call this? Mm -hmm. um, Pinnacle? Pinnacle's good. That's kind of, it's kind of yeah. on the, it's pretty on the nose. <laughs> If we want to do something different, but I like Pinnacle. Mm -hmm. Or like, Ape, I mean, Apex would probably be even more. Ape, yeah. I like Apex. Or Summit. Um, so what do you want? Are we... I, I like Apex. Apex, Pinnacle, they both sound great. Okay. Cool. So the mountain, the mountain city of Apex... So, um, now we get to actually make our characters. Um, so at the center of our game is a hero. Uh, someone willing to send, uh, to stand against this flaw uh, in the face of the Haven's coming destruction. Um, the hero will be our main character, and we, through their struggles, we will see the world come crashing down. Um, the next type of person is the Fallen. And the fallen are misguided individuals or individual who actually end up promoting the very flaw that will cause the destruction. Um, the fallen represents sort of our main antagonist to the hero. Um, and then the last one is the pillar. And the pillars are represent sort of like the average citizen and sort of the, the um, consensus of population's thoughts on issues and matters. There's basically just like the ordinary uh, status quo. Yeah. Um, so, and what we're gonna do is we're going to take turns um, wearing each of those three hats as we play. Um, so now then, so so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna create these three uh, characters together. Um, so let's start with the hero. Um, so the hero will be our main character. Um, we are the protagonist struggling against the flaw. So, mm -hmm. who, so who do we want to make to fail? Yes. <laughs> yep. Basically. Mm -hmm. So, um, do we have first off? Do do we want to start with a name? But let's look at the sheet here for a second. Yeah. Um, some other questions that we have are what what is our hero's occupation? Um, what do they do? And specifically, what tradition um, are they connected mm -hmm. to? Uh, second of all is rebellion and, and that would be what tradition do they openly oppose and why and then last would be describing yourself and what do you look like okay so if any of those three questions come out and jump out at you let me know name the hero should definitely oppose name oh oh my god so is it going to be like yeah. a Clint Eastwood man with no name thing <laughs> Like he was given like a really like I, I like I like having the hero be someone who's like really high up in the mountain, but like sees no, this is terrible. I can't believe this. And so he has basically from like 
he 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 got a name because his parents bought it for him or like or whatever. But like, so he has a really good name, but he doesn't like it and he, he doesn't want it to be his name. Like a Moses figure. Yeah, that's cool. Um. Okay. So he opposes it because um. Our hero. Dumb. <laughs> yeah. Our, our our hero saw it for what it is, like mm-hmm. from from the top. Yeah. Um. It's um. I'm having trouble coming up with exactly how to frame why, other than saying it's dumb. <laughs> um, I, I think I need a little bit more coffee this morning, so um, help me out, guys. Um, I think that it's because like people like having like I think that having a name associates you with like certain people and with certain like um traditions or occupations inside on on the on pinnacle or apex what did we decide uh, apex is apex, the name. So, yeah so uh, on apex so like having like if you have like a crappy bracelet name bracelet or whatever then mm-hmm. like you start doing like crappy stuff but if you have a good oh. bracelet it's just well i can do whatever the hell i want because i'm mm-hmm. freaking um because yeah because names um give power give power yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say something differently. Yeah, I've been exp- I like give power. That's even more like mm-hmm. to poignant. Um, I love it. Yeah, they they can see that like you shouldn't be somewhere just because you happen to get a good name. Yeah, but it's clear that people with good names also have good jobs. Yeah. Like there's an associate. Like there's a like, positive correlation to that. Mm-hmm. Cool. So. Um, awesome. What is, what is our hero's occupation and what do they do? Yeah. I think, I think the twist is yeah. that he, he, he was one of the people who gave people, who gave, people, oh, who yeah. gave names. Mm-hmm. Oh, he works for like the naming thing? Yes. Okay. So what is, um, what do we That's, call that? Is it a company? Is it part of the government? Is it, you know what I mean? Like what, what sort of, we didn't actually describe what our government is like here. Yeah. It feels um, very like laissez-faire economic based stuff, but I don't know. That could, uh, could be a mix of government industry you know what i mean mm-hmm. how are we, how do we see this um, is this like an Anne randian future <laughs> um what um like dystopian like what um what do we think about like so we i'm we're all we all agree that he works for the naming company or whatever mm-hmm. or who, the people who make the bracelets but who are the people that make the bracelets then are they religious are they uh, a social caste? Are they part of the government? Think, are they like just the elite that like have a thing that does it? I or? think, I guess governmental makes sense because I would think that they like, you would want the place to hand, because names have so, so much power, you would want the place giving out the names to be like something Scarce. official. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so something government. Okay. Um, so what do, what do we call the government thing? Do we want to give it like an office title or or are we okay with just calling it government for now? Um, government sounds fine for now. Okay. Sure. Um, so what? So let's. So what is his true title? So like, what do we call someone who makes the names and gives them? Like, what? What do we want to call that? Uh, then, like, I feel like namer sounds too lame. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, <clears throat> like, name giver. Um. Nomenologist. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, just like, I think there's like, 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 like hmm. yeah, it's like it's um new numerology. I think his names right. Um, I mean, if we're not coming up with anything, it's cool. Then we we just don't worry about it. It's like, uh, he. Oh wait, so is our hero a guy or a girl or 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 both or or neither? I don't really care, honestly. I guy, girl. Um neither, the first time, the the only other time I played Downfall, uh it was a female protagonist, so I wouldn't mind switching to a male. Okay. Just sure. if, if anything for the interest, if no one's partial mm-hmm. or anything like that. I yeah, cuz I always just want to try something different every time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So um onomatology is a study of the origin, history and use of proper names. So he's an onomatologist. Like onomatopoeia, yeah. Um. So he's an automator. Yeah, automator. Yeah, totally. Cool. 
I mean, if it was a girl, it would be on a matrix, which means even <laughs> more dope. Uh, just saying. But um, that would be for a different game. Cool. Um, so. Uh, mm, I want to say, I, I, I like that. Oh I just, I just like, that, that's like his real title. I, I want like the people, the lower class to like give him like a nickname that they like revere him by because this is how they, this is how they go from like crap living on the crappy part of the mountain to like moving up. Oh yeah. Like, like, so um i'm t- i'm all about that like so like there's two like there's there's gonna be there's multiple things but like your your resume or whatever is like people judge you by the school you went to and your mm-hmm. name but first your name like they don't even give you the time of day if your name's like right. dirt right uh-huh. like, they're like get out of here i like i don't care We're like how do you not have a name like that's just like your normal thing yeah. um totally so um yeah, there's literally like just like oh nope 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 oh hey this is a cool name this is a good name okay the titler here. like titleist um title I, I i was looking at tv tropes keeper of names it sounds super cool yeah keeper of names yeah mm-hmm. oh he's a keeper yeah totally yeah because he keeps people he keeps the names and he keeps and he keeps people out. down oh shit that that <laughs> double-edged awesome <laughs> um so what um what what's the guy's identity uh what does he look like you know like anything like that anything notable like if this was a movie what actor would play him mm. once again i guess there's another ambulance going on near me sorry <laughs> um let's uh let's do i feel like if the actor was playing an arcade like the actor I would want to play is just Clive Owen, but like <laughs> that's because I think, or like Gerard Butler. <laughs> um, so, are we... like, so, so this is an action movie, then. Oh no, I th- I think this is this is his. Uh, it's like his breakout movie to like that he can show that he has depth as an actor. <laughs> uh, what are you guys thinking? Uh, is that cool? It's like that's usually how I like describe people is just like how their actor looks like because yeah, to be yeah. honest with you it's like i don't want to describe he has brown hair and blah 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 i just say an actor i think gerard butler is cool yeah that can work it's literally gerard butler he's yeah, not even he's playing he's himself just, yeah, <laughs> just, he's kind of a gruff guy but um so but yeah it's like so uh, it's, it's 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 interesting because like appearance but aside from like if you wear certain materials or whatever, but like your own actual physical appearance doesn't seem to have like a big effect in this world. No. So, um, does our hero, should our hero have a name or what do we call, what does the hero go by? I think he, I think he had a name. I yeah. He, yeah. He, he definitely abandoned his name. Sure. Sure. And I, I, would, I, I, I can't I, I, wait I to play that is, out, but like, what's his starting name? Cause um, it's absolutely going to happen like that. Theo. I love that idea. So Theo. what is it? Theo? Theo sounds good. Theo. Oh, that's and awesome. That, yeah, and that's like a, like a like a top like a, like a maybe like second to top or like top top tier name or whatever. Oh yeah, sure. It's so hot right now. <laughs> Theo, it's so hot right now. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, guys. Um, so the next thing is the fallen, and so I think when we, we're done with the fallen and the pillar, we'll take our first break. Okay. So, um, fallen. Um, the fallen actively promotes the flaw. Um, the uh, promotes the flaws growth within the haven um and they're going to be the main antagonist that's going to challenge theo um so the first thing that we we come up with the fallen is um their relationship to the hero mm-hmm. um so is this a leader of the group that challenges him is it a family person a friend even a lover um what do we think I'm, I'm, for me, personally, all about that wife. All about that wife opposing him. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm totally cool if someone else has a cool idea, too. Right? I'm... Wife could be cool. Uh, like, Ooh, maybe it could so, be double layered. So, like, so the wife has a job doing something else, too. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, so I think what happened was his... Like a school teacher. His, dude, his family was like, all right, marry this person because she has a great name and we'll, we'll, we'll get to move up the mountain. And so... Oh, Yeah. And then he uh-huh. did, and he was like, he was happy with it. And then something happens where he's like, "This is bullshit." Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah, he's yeah, like, "This is this is a dumb game. game. I don't want to play this game." Basically. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. So let's. Yeah, um, yeah. He woke up one day and realized I literally named my wife because she was she's named. Because she had like, she, I, and I, yeah, I don't care about her. Yeah. I just wanted her name. Like, what am I doing with my wife? Yeah. Exactly. Oh my god. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Love her. Um, wife. Um. 
So, uh, occupation. Um, what is the wife's occupation? I love the idea of it being either like a teacher or like head mist- headmistress mm-hmm. of a sure. school. Uh, yeah, she's the headmistress of like. A, give me a, but we gotta come up with a name for a school. I can't say of school, like, because we, um, we need something that that sounds awesome for for the school. Um, because this, this is gonna be something that we can rely on. Um, like Paragon Academy or something like that. Um, ideas. Arcteryx. Uh, academy. Elevation I like academy. academy. What? Elevation Academy. It sounds like the ITT Tech of our. <laughs> <laughs> but like it's about it's, like, it's called Elevation. Sorry. About like I like being at the top. Yeah, I know. I just I don't want to I don't want to sound diminut- uh, diminutive. Of... I think this is pinnacle. I think this is pinnacle. Because can, can we call it pinnacle? She has teach at the best school. Yeah. Pinnacle Academy School too. No, I love the name. I love the idea that the place is called Apex, and then all the schools have like riffs on it, being like, yeah. "Take, <laughs> welcome here at Pinnacle Academy. We take you higher." Like, like you know, <laughs> like like the the little like yeah, commercial. Yeah, at Summit, the Summit School. <laughs> we have a cutting through metallurgy program. <laughs> uh, so, what does who? What actress plays our lover? Who plays? And we have to come up with the the name for the wife as well. But like, who? Um, what's going on? Either the name for our wife or the the what she looks like. I don't know actors. I... I know I suck at actors and actresses. Uh, my original idea would just be Angelina Jolie because like that's just my <laughs> default. Well, then obviously, our, our main character would have to be Brad Pitt at yeah. that point. <laughs> I, 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 I don't no, I think I think there. Gerard Butler and Angelina have some chemistry. I can see that. <laughs> uh, so what, um, apparently, it's, a, it's what? sorry to get off topic, but apparently I'm looking up actresses. Apparently, it's a thing to Photoshop teeth out of actress pictures. Wow. Like, there's so many of them. It's so weird. Oh God, that's weird. Um, what um, what are we thinking for just just either a name or or actor or actress? Um, what's the name of the, the girl who plays the, um, uh, she plays the role with Tom Cruise in Edge of Tomorrow. She plays the badass person. Oh, yeah. Ugh, can we not talk about, I got, has anyone seen the, the original, uh, All You Need Is Kill? Because no, but I, I need just... to, because it's way better than the other oh, one. Yes, it is. It's so yeah, much better. I know that, but, um, but you know what I'm talking about, that actress? Emily Blunt. Uh, it's Emily yeah. Blunt. Thank you. Done. Awesome. Yeah, she because she has a badass sort of like headmistress like cunning mm-hmm. thing about her. So that's why I was feeling it. Cool. Cool. And what's what's her name? Um, I like the idea that it's it's um, her name's kind of symbolic, if that helps. Yeah, because the, the names don't have to be a like our kind of names it can be something else too it could be like a concept like a concept yeah. name um, um like uh prosperity or something like that or like um prudence or uh you know what i mean something something maybe yeah, like that. or yeah. so maybe something um, related to dreams um i suck with names right now i'm never i've never been with names this is um, awesome Hmm. Uh, these sound bad. I'm looking up words that have to deal with pride, but they all sound really bad. Yeah, they're all like maleficent. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> conceit. Like no, because it's supposed to be good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, what if it's totally backwards? Like it's it's um. Her name her, is like it's desire to run running twist. What is it? Modesty or humility or something. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. No, absolutely. That's that's exactly what it will be. Um, it would be um. Uh, humility sounds so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, maybe a, a cuter name than humility, but I mean the concept. You're absolutely right, Adam. I, I I'm really feeling that idea. Um, 
like harmony or something like that. Um, <laughs> uh, let's go with humility. Okay. Awesome. Um, so last but not least is the pillar. Um, and it's okay if... Um, so our fallen and our pillar, they can die and change over the course of the game. Our hero oh. won't, but like the fallen oh. and pillar totally can. Oh, huh, um, interesting. So um, our pillar... Um, so the pillar is a normal person in Haven, content to live uh, in the society they are a part of. Um, they're just complacent. Um, they, they want to push the hero to accepting the status quo. Um, they're not, so like, they're not opposed to the hero. Yeah. Um, they're just someone, um, the hero can even, can even talk freely kind of about Haven. They're, they're sort of like a foil without being a antagonist. Mm -hmm. So, um, once again, uh, we either come up with the name first or the relationship to the hero, uh, similar to how a fallen does. Um, and then their occupation and identity. I think it's someone else who, or I think it's someone who we worked with, who... A co-worker? Yeah, who, who did the same thing that he did, but instead of, like, seeing, like, the awfulness mm -hmm. of it, he, like, he accepts it and enjoys it, so he... Yeah, he, like, like a work, like, yeah, a work friend that, like... like that dude. also, that also married up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he's a co-worker. Um, so he's a fellow automator. Mm -hmm. um, oh, oops, that's under occupation. Sorry. Because um, he, he just sees that we're making the best of the city as best as it can be. Yeah. The, like, mm -hmm. maybe he's like, you know what? Maybe it's not perfect, but you know what? Like, nothing yeah, is like, perfect. Like he, like, he always brings up, like, no, the other day I gave this family a really good name. Yeah, exactly. Really Ignoring the fact that, like, he screwed over 50 people, right? right yeah. Or whatever. Yeah, totally, totally. It's like, like the, the, the fact that it exists is terrible. He's ignoring. Oh that's my god! Not a, a thing. It's yeah. just like no. Like this family came in and like they were really low, and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna like I'm gonna bump their name a little bit, and like you know, that kid got into a really good school. Yeah, like <laughs> like I'm doing good stuff. I can't help everybody. Like I can't help everybody, but the people I do help. Like you know, it, it's not all bad. Or you know how people you know let themselves. Yeah. Cool. So um. I, uh, let's see, either the actor or actress that plays them, uh, their name, or their relationship to the hero. I guess just friend, right, would be friend. Are they friends? Yeah, I like friend. Um, we, need to get si we need to get sidekick actor. Um, the dude, oh man, um, what's his name? Uh, can I suggest a person? Can I suggest, uh, Idris Elba? Oh. <laughs> awesome. As the... Sweet. Uh, so what's, um, what's, what's their pillar's name? Generosity. So his name's Jen. Like he goes by Jen. Cool. Yeah, seems, seems fine. Okay. Cool. So, uh, I think that's that that will do for the start of our creation of our haven. Um, so at that point, um, now that we have created our characters, um, we are going to take a short uh, five minute break because we're about at our hour mark anyways. And then we're going to come in to actually start playing downfall and making scenes and watching our, our society that we just made up this mountain uh, tumble. So, uh, and, and return to the earth. So, uh, so stay with us for a little bit, and we'll be back in uh, five minutes. So thanks. <laughs>